All right, hi everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another video. Now, a couple years ago, I got into painting, and about a year ago, I was going to show my paintings, but then I discovered poor painting, which greatly enhanced my art. And, or at least I think it did. You know, you could be the judge of that. Art is, after all, subjective, but I personally think it did enhance my art. And I wanna show my paintings today I want to start with the one I most recently did. This one's called Island at the Top of the World. Here it is. This was a poor painting, which I added some stuff to it. I added a Viking to it, and I added a mammoth. As you can see, it has a very psychedelic look to it. It's called Island at the Top of the World. And you're going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see everything. Uh, the idea behind this painting, behind this concept, was in the late 19th century, there was a belief that the North Pole wasn't all ice. From what I understand, people hadn't gone there yet, so they believed that the North Pole wasn't all ice, that once you broke through the ice, there'd be this warm polar sea, and they believed there would be an island there. And then people's ma imaginations began to run wild. You know, they speculated there could be a Viking civilization on the island. They speculated there could be some mammoths. So, yeah, it's called Island at the Top of the World. Now, the reason why they thought there might be mammoths on this island was because there's an island called Wrangell Island, which is pretty far north. I think it's around Siberia, I want to say. And this island had a mammoth population living on it until 3,600 years ago. So, yeah, there were mammoths. They were a pygmy species of mammoth. Not all mammoths were huge. Some of the mammoths on the islands were smaller. They're like, like I said, like a pygmy species. But yeah, let's kind of take a look at it. Like I said, it has a psychedelic look to it. Wanted to make this kind of be like the Northern Lights, but it's kind of like the Northern Lights on steroids. You know, and it's technically, you know, a fictional place. It didn't prove to be a real place, so I kind of had free reign to sort of make it look like however I wanted. Kind of had them standing on some strange structure. You know, because it is essentially a fictional place but it was a place people thought may have been real. So I kind of want to show what it would look like if it were real. So that's that one again, a Viking, a mammoth. So, so far that one is my favorite painting. I'm showing my favorite paintings first. This is another one I did recently that I like. This one's called Minion of the Abyss. As you can see right there, there's a dragon-looking creature. Psychedelic. Now, I consider my art to be psychedelic art. And what I like about psychedelic art is the fact that, you know, it could be a psychedelic exaggeration of this world or it could be the way things look in another world. You don't know. It's kind of esoteric and mysterious like that. And I like that in art. I like things to be esoteric and mysterious. Because nowadays, a lot of times, they'll sort of spell everything out for you. You'll watch a movie or listen to music. Or, in you know, there's, there's not that mystery anymore a lot of the time. You know, they, they lay everything out for you, tell you everything, how it is. And there's none of that mystery, but it's that mystery that makes the art mysterious and cool, in a sense. I mean, it really is. The art needs that mystery, I feel. It needs that, like, esoteric mystery. So, you know, you're not supposed to entirely know what's going on in it. You know, people will ask me, well, what's what's going on here? What, what's he doing? What's he, you know, I'm just like, no. You know, <laughs> it's... That, that takes away from the essence of the painting, in a sense. 
Uh, yeah, this one's called, like I said, I'm going to close up Minion of the Abyss. My second favorite painting. Moving right along, this one right here is my third favorite painting. This one is called Writer at the Edge of Time. You see, I listen to a lot of metal <clears throat> and progressive rock when I paint. You know, Hawkwind and different kinds of bands. So as you can see, I'll get a close-up of the writer. Kind of a dune-like environment he's in. There's a bird on a tree. There's some sort of gas giant Jupiter-like planet. And another planet up here. So yeah, this one's called Writer at the Edge of Time. Yeah, I'm also a guitarist, and I play guitar. I want to get more into it again. I was going to start up again, but then, you know, I really got more into my painting, and I just got to try to balance both those things out now, you know, because I do like doing both. And that's why you can kind of see, you know, some of these paintings have titles that kind of seem like they'd be progressive rock songs or metal songs. But this one right here, I call Summerland, kind of like an Eden-like utopia. Again, it's the same thing I said, where you know, you're not sure if it's this reality or if it's another dimension, another world, and this is just how things look there. Now, when I did the pour for this, I got some good cells. That's what I did like about it. And I did varnish this one as well. But yeah, there's like a snake and some flowers, a rhino. Okay, now this next one, I'm a uh, fan of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and one of the things that Joe Rogan talks about, or used to talk about quite a bit, I don't think he talks about it too much anymore, is DMT and DMT entities. And I myself have never done DMT, but I got inspired by what he was saying. So I thought I'd do a painting that had a DMT entity in it. And as you can see, here it is. Here's the eye, the nose, the mouth. It's the DMT entity. As you can see, he appears to be in some sort of combat with like a phantom figure. Underneath there's like a octopus. Looks like he's going for like a penguin, pelicans. You have the swirly sky like that. Swirly psychedelic looking sky. But yeah, I did this DMT entity and then I thought it just would be cool if he was like about to fight a like phantom type figure so that's why you have that like grim reaper looking thing right there he's got like kind of like a wand of some sort you know it looks like you know something's about to happen you know, let's get a close-up on that octopus yeah you know, i wanted to have an octopus and an octopus or Kind of interesting things. I uh, know Terrence McKenna, I believe, has talked about them, and he mentioned something to the effect that octopus could change their colors, and he believes they could actually communicate with one another through changing the color pattern on their bodies. This like strange kind of communication that they supposedly have. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, again, this is yeah, Terrence McKenna, I believe, has said that. Okay, here's another one right here that I did. This one is called Spring Pond. Again, you can see I have kind of a Roger Dean influence on this one. This is of like a dragon 
flying over these like strange structures coming out of the water with trees growing on them. Yeah, kind of like a swampy area jetting off into the ocean. If what appears to be some kind of a uh, bird, like a comaret, and then a snake, as you can see, and then there, over there, there's like a there's like a crane or heron. There's some sticks in the water or in the swamp, rather, lily pads. Oh yeah, okay. and then you know, of course, the dragon, as I just mentioned flying over all that. Spring Pond is the name of this one. There's another one I did. I wanted to do a painting that would have a like a wizard in it. So I did this one. As you can see, there's a wizard right there. He's pointing at some sort of interdimensional door. And right here you have a cauldron with some entities coming out of it. Some dragon-like entities. Some sort of goblin looking thing, a ghostly entity. People have looked at this painting before and <coughs> kind of felt that it seems kind of like Disney-like. And yeah, you know, I don't think that's a criticism, but uh, it does kind of maybe look like something that would be from Fantasia or something that sort of has that look to it. Okay, now this next painting looks like hell. Pardon the Mel Brooks style joke there. <laughs> but yeah, this, I always, I wanted to do some kind of like a hellscape of some sort. A lot of great artists that I'm a fan of have done that. So I wanted to do my own. It's kind of like Charon on the River Styx or something or some kind of river in hell. But I sort of made him be like Charon, the fairy man. And you have like mountains in the background. Like a sky. You know, I wanted to give it that sort of hellscape kind of appearance. And this one right here, this one I started almost exactly a year ago. Maybe it was a year ago exactly. But this is my first pour painting. It's of a hydra. You see a lot of flowers. Psychedelic looking hydra. And then when I did this painting I left the sky blank because I wanted to research ways in which I could improve it and enhance the sky. So I looked into it and I saw some Pour painting tutorials on YouTube. Thought that was the perfect thing, and I, I think it is. I think it enhanced my artwork quite a bit, in my own opinion. You know, it didn't seem like a lot of people were utilizing pour painting for this kind of psychedelic artwork. You know, just <clears throat> maybe some people are, and they're not presenting it on YouTube, but it just didn't seem like people were utilizing it for that. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I, I got to do this. And a hydra, the sky. Okay. Now... I really want to show another one of my pour paintings. This one right here. This is off kind of like a guy astral projecting. There's a silver cord. Here's the guy's astral projecting into like another realm where there's, of course, a dimensional door. I like dimensional doors in my paintings. <laughs> then up top of it is some kind of pyramid structure and you have some swords. Psychedelic part on there. Some orbs by the door. Kind of like an energy field. Just kind of wanted to do one of the astral plane. <clears throat> you know, and uh, as you can see, the guy's like going for what appear to be these swords right here. And 
been a fan of the Elric Saga by Michael Moorcock. And there's a scene in the book where Elric travels to another dimension to get Stormbringer a sword. And I, I wanted to kind of capture that essence, you know, in a, in a painting, if I could, of a guy going into some other dimension or plane of existence to get some kind of powerful sword. I thought it would be cool to have these, like, pyramids around him and that. Okay, now, here's another one of my early poor paintings. This is a painting that's a bit abstract, as you can see. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of abstract art. However, I do think poor painting makes for the best abstract art. You know, if you must do abstract art, I think poor painting makes the best kind of abstract art. But I, I like adding things to the abstract art, thereby making it psychedelic art, in my opinion. See, there's a face there, kind of like a face, sort of a bird. Okay, and... Uh, so another one I want to show, or one of my earlier ones, non-poor painting. It's of a dragon going into like a dimensional door. Got a gas giant planet here, some mountains. Again, maybe I was watching a lot of Game of Thrones when I did this. <laughs> Here's the second one I did right here. Again, this is inspired by the artwork of Roger Dean. Always liked that Asia album cover he did, so I kind of wanted to do something sort of reminiscent of that. Of a sea creature looking right into like a lighthouse. This one I did just a little over a year ago. This one is of a robed figure that has like a griffin type th creature on a leash. The sky's red. Now I cannot look at this painting now without thinking of the movie Phantasm. There's a scene where those guys are wearing those robes and the sky's red and there's like a dune area around. I can't look at this without thinking of that. Phantasm really reminds me of that. And that wasn't intentional. But now I look at it, I just think of that. If you haven't seen Phantasm, it's a good movie. It came out in 1979. There's been some sequels, but I recommend the first. I haven't really seen the sequels. Maybe I might have seen a little of, bit of the second one. There's a space painting I did. Yeah, and I think poor painting can enhance your space paintings. You could do planets better, I think. But this is before I did the poor painting. Okay, this one right here is the first painting I did. It's of a lizard man. It's in a frame, so it's a little bit of glare. And it has sort of an impressionistic look to it, I think. You know, almost like if one of the impressionists were to do a painting, although they wouldn't do a lizard man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, has that kind of look to it. Lizard man, yellow sky. Again, I'm going for the psychedelic appearance and look. I didn't really, I didn't know about poor painting at this time. So, you know, I probably could have done a better painting if I knew of poor painting at this time, but yeah, this is my first. There's another one I did that's more abstract. I don't have too many abstract paintings. This is another more abstract one.
Okay, so those are my paintings, and that's it. That's about 17 paintings, I believe, and I am planning on doing art prints, so if you are interested in purchasing any of them, just let me know. Email me. I have my email on this channel, or you could just, you know, mention something in the comment section below. But if you are interested, yeah, let me know. I know maybe we have a band and you want to use one of my paintings for an album cover. I think there's a few of them at least that might make good album covers. So if you are interested in that, just let me know. But yeah, I just wanted to get my paintings out there, show people what I've been doing in terms of painting. Maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't. But I've definitely had a fun time doing these paintings. So if you watch this video, as always... I thank you for watching. Have a good day.